All right, your history lesson for this uh, day. On this day in the year 1904, Giacomo Puccini's Madame Butterfly premieres at La Scala in Milan to disastrous reviews. Puccini eventually wrote five versions of the tragic opera, which follows the ill-fated marriage between an American naval officer and his young geisha Japanese wife. It's now the most performed opera in the U.S. So few revisions and success. Bingo! Today also marks former Chicago Bulls player Michael Jordan's 47th birthday. Jordan described on the NBA website as the greatest basketball player of all time. Instrumental in popularizing the sport in the 80s and 90s. Not many people remember, but he also did a brief baseball stint and played for the Washington Wizards. Bit of trivia there. And on this day, 1972, then U.S. President Richard Milhouse Nixon departed for China. It was a monumental trip, formalized ties with the Communist PRC, which at the time was one of America's staunchest foes. Here is an artist renditioning of what was a very real picture. Contrast that with the picture of President Obama standing by himself at the foothills of the Great Wall last year. Every time around this time, Edelman releases its trust barometer, which measures consumer trust in governments, corporations, institutions. We've had some trust issues in the past 12 months. Haven't we? We've had all kinds of things. Kirby and I were talking about Toyota today. Such a hard-earned reputation built up over generations. Bam! Look what's happening right now. Joining us is Alan Vandermolen, Edelman Asia Pac president. Hello, Alan. Happy New Year. Bernie, happy New Year. Great trust to be is here. back or trust is out the door? Well, trust is under the microscope. I think when you look at relative trust in institutions, government, business, NGOs, and media in mm -hmm. our region as a roll-up, they're at trust parity which tells us that institutions have to be cooperating to drive their sustainable economic initiatives. Mm -hmm. I think that's the big watch out. I think the other headline we saw in trust this year is two of the top three drivers of corporate reputation in the region are what we would call soft power. Number one is high quality products and services. Number two, transparency. Hello, Toyota. And number three is this blanket level of trust. Mm -hmm. uh, parity, trust parity. What does that mean? It means everything, is there a certain egalitarianism which is uh, sifted into the equation? That means uh, opinion leaders have traditionally in our region trusted government's top. Number one, because we've had a tremendous economic run up. We see our the ex middle class expanding. We see greater consumer choice, those kinds of things. Number two, they've trusted business because of the patriarchal nature of business in our region. Family owned businesses essentially taking care of their own and taking care of the communities. Mm -hmm. I think what we've seen over the last few years, and you name the scandals, you talked about tainted milk, you talked about any number of product things. We can look at Toyota today. Yeah. What we're seeing is opinion leaders finally saying, you know what, we want the institutions of civil society to work together mm -hmm. for uh, to enable to continued sustainable economic growth in a way where we can have a check and balance in place across these institutions. Kirby, are you surprised by these results? I would have, I would have said that with things like you know the Lehman Mini Bond scandal in Singapore and Hong Kong, uh, questions about product safety. I mean, there's this perception out there that business is not really on people's side. Governments, in many cases, are not seen as being in empowering the people, but just trying to justify their existence in many ways. I would have assumed the trust basically fell through the basement. Well, I guess if, you, if, if you're looking at it from a zero-sum game standpoint, to use that term again, that, that maybe there would be parity, but uh, do you measure it overall? So did, did overall trust in everything fall, or did you not measure it that way? As no, that no. We, we, said, we look at it across institutions. Relative. So in the region this year, government slightly up, business flat, media slightly down, NGOs slightly down. And, and do you equate that ever, or have you, uh, to stock market activity? If the private sector, if, if companies, businesses lost, uh, lost trust, does that mean that, that it may be a turn in the stock market in general, or have you not? Uh, no, we, we, we don't make that direct correlation, although when you do study it, you tend to see as the economic fortunes of a particular economy or a market go down, trust in business tends to go down with that. Mm -hmm. By the way, this, uh, this uh, fairly large sample size, how does this compare with your previous, uh, the construction is, how does it compare with the uh, previous uh, models? Almost 5,000 people in about 2,000 yeah. countries. We, we've increased, and in, in Asia this year we've added Singapore to our sample, so now we look at seven markets across Asia Pacific. Uh -huh. that, Singapore, did that skew the uh, results at all? That's seen as a very, a very, very hard-earned reputation for being a corrupt free country and well, a competent government. You certainly see government as the most trusted institution by far. Um, business is probably five to seven percentage points below government in terms of trust, but those two things in Singapore are linked very closely together, right. which I think reflects the patriarchal nature of leadership and business and government leadership in this region. And Singaporeans mm -hmm. and even Singaporean elites give the government and business, which they view as one unit, by the way, great credit for the sustained economic development and well-being and yeah. also for keeping the economic crisis 
at bay, if you will. Uh, did Edelman repeat this uh, uh, survey, this uh, poll in different geographies as well? How did the Asia PAC stack up? I'm sure if you laid it over the results from, say, uh, the United States, you'd have a very, very different set of uh, outcomes. Correct? Yeah, look, the, the broad differences are when you look at Asia versus North America versus Europe, here's what you see. North America and Europe, NGOs, most trusted institutions, which is really a rebuff against government having to get involved in business and mm. bail out mm. businesses, mm -hmm. and opinion elites looking for a third party such as NGOs to come in and be uh, the, the check and balance, if you will. In Asia, NGOs continue to bring up the rear here in terms of trust. It's the least trusted institution for two reasons. The first reason is generally when you say NGO here, you tend to think of finger wagging Western NGOs, the Amnesty uh -huh. Internationals, the Greenpeace is saying, here's how you should do it, government. So therefore, we don't want them yeah, meddling. Yeah. Oh. That's right. Okay. In the other extreme of NGOs in the region, we tend to have a lot of mom and pop NGOs who uh -huh. don't have great accountability. Uh -huh. So money may go in there, but we're not quite sure where that money is going. So we mm -hmm. see. NGOs as an evolving or emerging institution of civil society. All right. Uh, one finding in this uh, in this year's survey also, uh, it might uh, it might sound a little more esoteric, a little more qualitative and subjective, but uh, a shift from focusing on shareholders to stakeholders. Now, yeah. you know the, the Adam Smith classical definition of a company's overriding goal is to increase the wealth of shareholders, but that has clearly changed over the years and sort of been uh, retooled and recalibrated. Well, I'd suggest that Adam Smith is literally and figuratively dead. I, I'd suggest <laughs> yeah. that... that what so is John Maynard Keynes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what, what we're seeing is this, that looking after shareholders as the primary objective of a corporation doesn't lead to sustainable economic growth in the views of opinion leaders because you look at the banks in North America for instance you look at the big three automakers when you focus on your shareholders you don't necessarily focus on market demands you take your eye off your customers you take your eye off your employees you, you decide that maybe you're not going to be as transparent as you want with the markets because that might hurt your shareholders a right. la look at what's happened to Toyota yeah. so we're seeing a real shift away from a shareholder society to a stakeholder society. Mm. I think another interesting find for us this year, number one most trusted source of information about your company or your business, yep. take a guess. Uh, Google. Your employees. Oh. So that's either real good news or real bad news. <laughs> the gossip mill. It's real good news or real bad news, depending on where you sit and how you treat your employees, what your labor policies yep. are, how transparent you are okay. with them on your issues. Sounds like that uh, previously unused suggestion box is getting kind of crammed full. Alan, thank you. Alan Vanderbilt and Edelman. Shares in Australia's Coca-Cola Amatil capitulating a little carbonation after full year numbers. We're going to talk to the chief right ahead. Fixed Income Report, brought to you by BNP Paribas, the bank for a changing world. The bank for a changing world. Double A1 credit rating from Moody's. Voted number one in financial reputation by Wall Street Journal 